Good evening. I have, an, I have an opening statement, prepared statement, and it goes as follows. I am calling the December 17, 2020 meeting of the Brockton Planning Board to order. My name is Bob Pelagi. I am the chair of the board. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, chapter, general law, chapter 30A, section 20, relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the December 17th, 2020 public meeting of the Brockton Planning Board shall be physically closed to the, to the public to avoid group congregation. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Planning Board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record at the appropriate points in the meeting. For those of you joining us by phone who want to ask a question, press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of this recording and transcript will be posted to the city's website page within 72 hours. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure count accuracy. Uh, quorum call board members, please respond in the affirmative to indicate your attendance at this meeting. Larry Hassan? Here. Tony Gonzalez, unfortunately, is not with us at this moment. Reggie Thomas? He's not with us at this moment. Craig yes, Peter? he is. I'm sorry? Reggie is here. Good evening, Reggie. He's uh, just muted. Reggie, can you, un can you unmute? Good evening, Reggie. Hey, guys, I'm on. Sorry about that. That's okay. So we're just doing the roll call, so can you respond? Reggie Thomas, in affirmative uh, attendance? Here. Okay, Craig Pina? Here. And Bob Pelagi. So we have four members. I declare that we have a, we have a, uh, a quorum to go forward with the, with the meeting. All right, the agenda for this evening. Uh, we have the acceptance of the minutes uh, of the November the 4th, 2020 meeting. We have one A&R plan, that's at 76 South Street. Uh, I don't know, if, we don't have any other any other housekeeping items, I hope uh, not, Pam. Subdivision plans or lot releases, are we good? Or um, no, and the denial has already gone out and been filed for 76 South Street and- So there's no neat reason to- Not a hearing. No, right. not a public hearing. Very good. Okay, so we have a number of uh, public hearings tonight. Uh, some have been continued. I'll read them agenda, as agenda items. These agenda items. The first agenda item is a definitive subdivision. It's property at Plot 2 Belgarvie Avenue. It's a four-lot residential subdivision. That has been continued to February the 2nd, 2021. Second item is a definitive subdivision. Property at 678 East Street. It's a it's an intermunicipal uh residential subdivision Brockton and East Bridgewater. There are two lots in Brockton. The owner is Benjamin Carroll, representative is Munson Engineering. Third agenda item is preliminary subdivision. Property is at uh, map 74, plot 18, uh, uh, map 74, plot plots 18 market and one minus four Copeland Street. It's a two lot residential subdivision uh, Juan Torches is the owner and land surveys is the representative. That has been continued to January the 5th, 2021. Number four, preliminary subdivision, properties at 42 Quincy Street, five lot residential subdivision. Owner representative is Springfield Ventures Realty Trust. That has been continued to January the 5th, 2021. Item five is a site, is site plan approval. Prop, the property is at Plot 383 Quincy Street, applicants Mike Mather. Uh, and that will be heard this evening. Uh, six is site plan approval, properties at 4 Main Street. It's retail and marijuana. Applicant is Atlantic. Medicinal partners, representative is attorney Phil Silverman. Seven, site plan approval, properties at 4 Means, uh, 40, pardon me, 40 Means Avenue. <coughs> it means city recovery. Representative is Green Seal Environmental. And the eighth and final agenda item is site plan approval. Property is at uh, 119 uh, 015 Oak Hill Way. Applicant is 
LJDE, uh, the representative Strong Point Engineering. So, without further ado, the first agenda item, uh, not being continued, is the property is at 678 E Street. It's a two-lot residential subdivision. I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the um, applicant and his representatives are here. Uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, we went over this in detail, obviously, at the last meeting. So now, at this point, is there is there anyone in the public in attendance that wishes to be heard on this uh, agenda item, plot uh, 678 E Street? Do we have any, Rob, that you see? Oh, I'm, I was hoping that Pam would move them in, but I'll take care of that. Hang on. Oh, um. uh. Pam, are you doing that now? Because I'm. Um, oh, to panelists. Okay. To promote panelists. Promote to panelists. I think that's all of them. Gigi, Carl, or Ben and Scott. Yeah. And I don't see anybody with a hand up. Okay. So I guess we can assume that there's nobody from the public that wishes to be heard. I will, I'll, I'll assume not. Um, do we, do any of the board members have any new or additional information that they would like to add? I'm, I'm seeing, I'm getting negative, so we'll assume that there is no new, new information from the board members. Now, Pam, as far as uh, to be, I guess, procedurally correct, I mean, this took a couple of, there was a couple of very comprehensive motions that were made. Uh, we want to make sure that we include, I mean, we can't just simply say because of this, the other people might have not have been on the call. So we can't, I guess we can't make a motion that would say that would reflect on the motion that we did a week ago. So, well, or can we, I don't know. I sent you all the minutes. Yes. The motion was in there. Um, yep. And I have printed that out. I mean, I can, I'll do it the simplest so can way. Restate you can restate the motion for the record and then somebody can move it forward and second it and then you can deal with the same thing for the um, waivers. Okay, just a reminder, the, 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 motion, the motion to approve, I hope, hope everybody has the benefit of the minutes that, that Pam prepared. The motion was a little comprehensive in that Contained in the motion to approve was the was the three comments that the city council made, or and our city council and our local local cities, the the, the the city engineer made, and then there was some some other items in there. I don't I don't notice I don't I don't want to miss anything in the in redoing the motion. So. So I think if you if somebody just makes the motion to issue. The, so it was a motion to issue a standard approval with the conditions recommended and then the following special conditions, which were the planning board is to be notified of any changes made to the density of the plan in East Bridgewater and those will be to be approved by the planning board. The developer agrees to seek an intermunicipal agreement for water and sewer services and or water services and or sewer services between the city of Brockton and the town of East Bridgewater. Approval of this project is contingent upon such intermunicipal agreement being granted by the city of Brockton. The plan shall be updated to add the radius at the curb line at East Street. Motion approved with those set conditions. I'll second that motion. Okay, I think that's I think that's durable enough. I mean, you, we, we've recited we've recited the the conditions of approval. I don't think we the important thing is we haven't missed anything, Pam. Right? 
No, that is that is the way the motion was. So that was the end of the motion, the motion you voted on. Okay, fine. All right. And so, to be true, I'm going to cut and paste it. Yes, just to be sure that we haven't missed anything, because I don't want to, I wouldn't want to miss anything. Okay. Just, uh, just to call your attention to it, uh, Ben Carroll here. I just yes, would, like, would like you to know that Gigi Munden and Attorney Ford and I are here. It's just saying that uh, permission to, to access our video cameras isn't allowed, but we are here. Okay, yeah, no, we see you on the screen, but thank you for acknowledging yourself. Yeah, we see the lineup. There's Gigi, there's Scott, and yourself. Thank you. Okay, uh, board members, um, vote by roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? She's not here. She's not with us yet. Okay. Uh, Reggie Thomas? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes, so that this subdivision is approved. And then uh, we move on to waivers. There was there was two waiver requests. One was curb, and the other was the radius at the at the street line, at the mm -hmm. east street line. So oh, the first minute. request was a, a waiver to to waive standing granite curb. As you know, the, the city engineer expressed his displeasure with that. So uh, would someone like to make a motion to approve? The motion, motion to hope that it does not prevail. Motion to approve and hopes that it does not prevail. Second. Who made that, Larry? Craig. Craig Approved. made the motion. I second. Larry seconds. Larry seconds. Vote on the roll call. Larry. Larry Hassan. Approve. Yes. Uh, Reggie Oops. Thomas. Oops. No, you're not. You're not voting. You're voting in the. Uh, you're voting in that. If you vote, you're voting. Yes. You're voting in opposition. So you're. It was the hopes that it doesn't prevail. Right. So. Yeah. It, it's a. So you need no vote. vote. It's a no vote. Larry, Larry has signed. No, okay. So no, I was saying yes to the waiver. No grant to the to no waiver. So. Okay. So you want you got to vote in the you're going to vote in the, in the you're going to be opposed you're going to vote yeah. in the negative. Okay. Correct. Correct. What? So Larry Hassan. No. No. Reggie that Thomas. was simple. <laughs> no. No for Reggie. Okay. Craig Pina. No. And Bob Pelagi is a no. Um, and then the other waiver request that before us is a, is a, is a waiver request to, to waive the re subdivision rules and regulations requiring a minimum 30-foot radius at the beginning of the subdivision. Um, motion, motion to approve. Motion to, to grant the waiver. Motion to motion to grant. A second, please. I'll second that. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second to grant the waiver for a minimum radius at the at the beginning of the subdivision. Uh, roll call vote is Larry Hassan. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Craig Pina. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay, and then we had the we had the uh, the issue of surety, and I and I believe. If, unless they they've got the option to change it, but I think they were going to do. Were they going to do covenant? Covenant. Yes, they were. Is that correct, Scott? That is correct, Mr. Paji. Okay, thank you. So covenant is what they've chosen. Um, does that take care of the issues? It does. Okay. Well, all right. So thank you again for attending. I think we're all set with that agenda item. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye all. Okay. All right. It would be number five. Yep. Okay. So agenda item number five is site plan approval. Uh, plot. It says plot three eighty three Quincy Street. Uh, Mike Mather. Uh, who was the? Let's see. Who was the representative on there? Uh, that? Would be John McCluskey. Okay, good evening, John. I think I got you both. John? He's muted. Oh, he's muted. Oh, okay, I'm unmuted. Okay, wonderful. Good evening, um, <clears throat> Attorney McCluskey. This would be the same? Yep. Where did we lose Mike Mather? Yes, and Mike Mather, the applicant, is with us as well. So, uh, similarly, uh, if there's no other, uh, we, we've already heard the presentation, and uh, right now we're going to open this up. It's a public hearing, so we're going to open this up to the public. 
uh, for any public comment and also any other further comments or concerns on the part of the planning board. Um, John, do you have, first of all, do you have any other further comments or? Well, uh, only, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Only that you, you voted in favor. Uh, we didn't hear about this change until the other day. Um, so, uh, you know, just as a practical matter, we're not waiving that favorable vote, but uh, we'd certainly be happy to answer any questions uh, that uh, come up uh, this evening, if any. We don't think there'll be any, but if there's a, there are, we'd certainly be happy to answer them. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney McCluskey. Okay, so let's open this up to the public. Um, do we recognize any, any, are there any, any participants from the public that wish to be heard, either Pam or Rob? I don't see any hands up. Please raise your hands if you have any questions. You'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I see no one, Pam. No. Okay, hearing none, uh, we'll move along. Is there any other questions or concerns on the part of the planning board? Okay, hearing none. Um, let's see. Okay, I, I, and is there any that other one. Is there anything to go with this one, Pam? I, I don't read. No, that was just a standard site plan approval, standard conditions. Yeah. Motion approved with the standard conditions. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, vote by roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. All right, well, thank you, uh, Attorney McCluskey and, and Michael Mather. Appreciate your. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Okay, next agenda item is, uh, that would be, I guess, item number six. That is site plan approval. This is uh, number four, Main Street. Retail marijuana applicant is Atlantic Medicinal Partners. Representative is Attorney Phil Silverman. Um, good evening, Attorney Silverman. Hi. I'm not sure why I can't get on the video, but I'll try well, again. Okay. Uh, it says the host has stopped it. Okay, that's all right. We all got a similar message, but that's okay. The important thing is that you're on. Okay. Uh, we did we did hear your your very comprehensive uh, presentation at the last meeting. Uh -huh. um, I don't think I don't think the board from the board's perspective that we need any more input. I'm going to give the board members an opportunity to speak. Um, at this time, I will ask if um, either Rob or Pam recognizes any members of the public that wish to be heard. Again, any nobody members, raising uh, their hand. Please raise your hand with the... Uh... Most of these people are attached to something else. I see no one raising their hand. Okay. Uh, planning board members, do any of the planning board members have any other comments or concerns on this project? Um, I, I was just wondering, though, as we were reviewing it last week, is there anybody else that occupies that building now? There, there are other tenants on the upper floors. On the upper floors, and you're occupying the basement? A, a portion of the basement. portion, because it's kind of a walkout area, right? To the parking lot out back? Correct. Okay. I mean, I don't know if it matters or not when it comes to licensing or not, but there's a dental practice in there and a church in there. So I don't know about if that makes a difference or not. There's, there's no buffering uh, from those types of businesses under state law. The okay. key under uh, the Cannabis Control Commission is that there be limited access that any, nobody else can just walk into. Okay. All right. Thank you. That was, all, that was my question. Did, did you by any chance get an exact measurement of the distance between uh, this facility and the one on Pleasant Street? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, I, I have not been made aware by anybody that it's within the buffer. Um, well, their, their map shows that there's nothing within. You have a context map? We did. We provided that. Location, and there's nothing within that buffer. 
That would have come up at site plan review anyway. I mean, at the tech review. If they were too close, they would have because we we actually did have that discussion on the two on North Pearl Street. Yeah, which right. is which is they're they're inches apart. Correct, and they um, are, they meet that by ten feet. So. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, were there any? Were there? Any, I don't remember. Were there any other conditions or concerns that this that the tech review had on this one, Pam? Or um, no, these are a, a standard, the standard um, approval letter that goes out for all retail marijuanas, and, and right. there was an issue when there weren't any on on this. Um, and then their next step would be city council. Okay, and then Mr. So finally, uh, Attorney Sobin, did you have any other comments that you wish to make? I, I do not. Okay, wonderful. All right, could I get a motion in a second, please? Motion to approve site plan approval for Main Street Retail Marijuana. A second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call, a roll call vote. Larry Hassan? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. So that, that has been approved. Thank you again, uh, Attorney Silverman. Right. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Agenda item number seven, <clears throat> site plan approval. 40 Means Avenue, the applicant is uh, Champion City Recovery. The representative is uh, Green Seal Environmental. Good evening to, who is the representative on that, please? Um, Court. Who is that? I think. Bob, somebody raised their hand. Yeah, I'm, I'm Courtney and I moved her over. Courtney, you can turn on. Oh, she's out of the camera. Hello. And Jack. Courtney, is there anyone else uh, with you? Yes. Up. Jack O'Leary. Jack oh, O'Leary. Oh, there he is. <clears throat> He's on his way over now. Okay. On on this. Okay. Is he on? Is he on this this matter here on Champion, Rob? Yes. He indicated yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jack, you can turn your camera on if you'd like now. Oh, thank you. Okay, so can we proceed? Yes, please, Mr. Chairman. All right, Mr. O'Leary, good evening, sir. Good evening, Mr. Palaji. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, would you care to make a brief presentation on this? Well, I believe that uh, Courtney would like to, so let's let's her make the let's let her make the presentation. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, so good evening. I'm Courtney Beckwith from Green Seal here with uh, Jack O'Leary. Um, and we're talking about 40 Means Avenue, uh, which is right across the street from 138 Wilder Street. Um, both properties are owned by Champion City Recovery, and they operate a construction and demolition hand, uh, a rail handling transfer station at that location. Um, that their normal operations uh, utilizes heavy equipment, including front end loaders um, and excavators, and those require periodic maintenance. Um, so we're proposing at 40 Means Avenue to uh, build a, a, a maintenance shed to have a covered and enclosed stormwater shelter, shelter to, to, do, to do some work. The parcel right now is a paved parking lot um, that employees at the transfer station use. Um, and we are proposing a 1,600 square foot, um, it's a flex fan structure that will be put on top of shipping containers um, with a 14 foot by 14 foot uh, roll up door at the front for the machines to enter and exit and a man door in the rear. Um, we are proposing a connection with underground electric, but uh, no further utilities. Um, we're not proposing any water, sewer, um, or gas connections. Um, we're anticipating that the use of the structure will occur about once a week. Um, that's about their, their current maintenance schedule. Um, they're currently doing the maintenance inside the C&D facility, and they'd like a separate area that they can safely store all of their equipment and um be able to, to go and focus just on their their maintenance um 
there'll be access from Means Avenue. The parking lot has already been designed for truck access. Um, there are currently 10 truck parking spots in that parking lot, um, and we anticipate taking up approximately four of those. Um, a stormwater management system was developed at the same time as the permitting was done for the transfer station. Um, and that covers the areas from 40 Means Avenue and 138 Wilder. Um, that system was designed by J.K. Holbrom in 2001, and we have included that in the application. Um, since we're not proposing any changes to impervious areas, and we're not proposing any, any groundwork, um, we are proposing to keep the, the stormwater management system the same as it is. Um, the stormwater that will land on 40 Means Avenue is going to sheet flow into the catch basin on Means Avenue, and that will go through the entire uh, stormwater management treatment system, which consists of deep sump catch basins, um, two oil water separators, a water quality swale, um, and then uh, multiple sections of a detention basin. Um, it'll go into a first section, go through a check dam, and then it'll go into the second section, go through a check dam, and then go into the final long extended um, section of the, the detention basin and ultimately make its way into the, the wetlands behind the railroad. Um, so we are inside the uh, maintenance structure. There's a very small potential for, for spills um, during the course of the maintenance. So we are proposing to have spill kits on site and including a containment berm around the perimeter of the the shelter. Um, it'll be about it'll be six inches high from as made out of asphalt along the the perimeter on the inside, made out of concrete at the front of the the entrance, um, so that the the vehicles and trucks can go over that safely. Um, and in the worst case scenario, if there was a a spill that would fill up to the brim, then that six inches, um, if we used five inches conservatively, it would hold approximately 3,000 gallons of, of liquid. Um, none of these machines have that capacity or close to that capacity. Um, so we believe that having the spill kits on site and this containment berm as a, a backup um, will be sufficient to ensure that no incidental liquids uh, from the maintenance activities leave the, the shelter. Um, I believe that's our summary. Um, we've gone through technical review um, a few months ago, and I believe we met um, most of the other site plan review requirements. Um, I mentioned the containment burn because that did come up um, in the technical review. Um, and as for, for fire safety, we are proposing to have fire extinguishers inside the, the shelter and we have two exits. Um, and as it's a, a 1,600 square foot shelter, we, we believe that'll be sufficient. Um, would I be able to share my screen to show the site plans or is that already in front of everybody? You should be able to share it. Okay. Is it not sharing? Oh, there it goes. Here it comes. All right. Are you able to see the site plans? I can't see what I'm sharing. <laughs> yes, we do. We see page C4, uh, Courtney. Okay, perfect. So just to further emphasize what I already spoke about, um, here are the two shipping containers back to back on one side, and then there will be two more on the other side. Um, and the flex span structure at the will look something like this, um, having a steel arch around and then a, a canvas top um, just placed on top of the, the containers with this rolling door in the front and a man door in the back. Um, Oops. And we are proposing to connect the underground electric from this existing 
utility pole um, and revegetate the areas around it. Um, currently, going from means uh, from this property across Augustine Street, which is a, a privately owned road, um, there's not much of a, a vegetated buffer there. So we are proposing um, including some vegetation just to, to make it look nicer. Um, we, we don't believe we need uh, much screening because of the industrial nature of the entire area. Um, and then that here's a, a detail of the containment berm um, we were talking about. Um, this would be the asphalt section that equipment does not go over. Um, this is the, the concrete section um, and we're proposing to have this on the inside of the storage containers. And I think that might be about it. Um, are there any questions that I... I had one question, uh, Courtney. I see that you delineated the, uh, the wetlands there. Did this require an environmental filing? It did not. Um, so we are, are far outside the, the, the buffer. Um, no. These wetland delineations are left over from work at the transfer station, um, which did require wetland filing. Um, but as we're we're across the street, we yeah, you're, you're ways away from that. So you didn't you didn't you didn't uh, newly you didn't most recently uh, redelineate the wetlands. Did you use the old lines from Holmgren's submission? Um, we did use the old lines. I don't believe these are from Holmgren's submission. Um, we've done. Let's see if I have the name of who did this. We have done some extra work on this area um, as, as, as a firm. Um, so I believe these are from a more recent delineation. More recent delineation. Um, okay. But I can confirm that. But you're doing, your activity is well beyond the, uh, well outside the uh, enforcement area anyway. Yes. Okay. Uh, board members, any other questions? Uh, so with it, Pam, um, were there any other issues, unaddressed issues on, on the part of check review? I didn't attend that check review meeting, but I assume all the other check review comments have been satisfied. Um, yes, there were actually very few. Okay. The nature of the project. And, um, just so you're aware, the conservation agent did review everything. Okay. What, 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 Okay, the, as it, the delineation that showed on the plan, that's good. Okay, so uh, at this time, being a public hearing, um, if there's any members of the public that wish to be heard, are you seeing anybody that's um, either Pam or Rob that wishes to make a comment? Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Yes, sir. Just a point of clarification, is this building gonna be for storage or for maintenance or both? So this building is going to be for maintenance. Um, there may be some storage of equipment that would be used for maintenance, um, but there would be no, no storage of any, any heavy machinery. Um, How about storage of uh, volatile items, volatile uh, or petroleum items or things like that? No, they won't be refueling um, in here. This would be more for me mechanical repairs. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, uh, if there's no other comments on the part of the board, and if there's no one from the public that wishes to speak, I believe we're in good we're in, in good order to go to a to go to a motion. I would say. Say. Motion to grant. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Larry Hassan. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So that, that item is, uh, is approved. So thank you to the attendees. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank and you. Have a good evening. Thank you. you too. All right. Eric, is everybody there that's there with you? 
Um, I believe we are waiting for Stephanie Holbin, who's on the call as well. She is there. Okay. And um, we may yes. be looking for Eric LeVay, L-E-V-Y. Okay, got him. Okay. And I'm going to move over the ward council because there, and that takes care of everybody. All right. Well, all right. All right, so this is a site plan approval. This is property at uh, it's, it's the, the city's location is, uh, imagine it's map 119, plot 15, Oak Hill Way. The applicant is LJDE, and the representative is Strong Point. That is uh, Eric Diaz, I believe. Yes, it is. Good evening, sir. Uh, you may proceed. Excellent. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes, would sir. you let the record know that Tony Gunn, uh, is, is now present. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, good evening, uh, board member Tony Gonzalez. For the record, has joined uh, has joined the meeting, so we have a full board meeting at this time. And if you can, uh, Mr. Diaz, if you could share the screen so we can see, uh, that would be most helpful. Yes, sir. Uh, give me just half a second to figure out how to do that, and I will do that. Thank you. Can everyone see that? There it is. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, great. Um, for the record, Eric Dias, registered professional engineer with Strong Point Engineering Solutions, um, here tonight representing LJDE LLC um, <clears throat> for the property at Zero Oak Hill Way. Um, just by way of orientation to start out with, take Oak Hill Way, follow it all the way to the end. Uh, you will pass the UPS Depot on your left hand side and then you will run smack into a fence on the property. Um, the property is actually bisected, well, I don't want to say bisected, but a portion of the property, at least, back in the southerly corner here is in West Bridgewater, and there is a power line utility easement that runs uh, through a small portion in Brockton and in West Bridgewater. Um, there are wetland resource areas on the site. The project is currently under an order of conditions, an active order of conditions. Um, that is before the Conservation Commission for currently an extension um, and an amendment that is pending the results of this site plan um, review process. Um, currently, the site is a vacant site. It's being used uh, just for outdoor storage um, of waste management facilities, um, dumpsters, things of that nature. Um, everything is well contained within the site. There are no lecherous ke uh, chemicals or toxins or anything like that. We're talking just solid uh, waste materials, dumpsters, things like that. Um, so the site is located in an industrial three district. I'm going to talk off of this plan because this one shows the main portion of the site the most. Um, we have some, some ideas for what's going to be developed out on this site. Uh, we, as you can see on this plan, we're showing currently one, two, three potential buildings on the site. All of those things are a little subject to change as we move through what the needs of the tenant are. But for right now, what we're before the board for is what we're calling phase one, which is being split up into a phase one A and a phase one B. Phase 1A, which is what we intend to build right away, is simply the access drive to the facility. No matter what we do here, we need access to the facility. Um, the dirt gravel road that we have now isn't going to cut it forever. So what we're proposing to do is jump off the existing pavement on Oak Hill Way. There is an existing wetland crossing, uh, stream crossing in this location here. Um, and there are some sewer and water utilities that run along the stream in this location. We're simply proposing to bring an access driveway into the site as far in as we can. We're proposing a temporary hammerhead turnaround for fire safety at the end of the um, driveway. That temporary turnaround is gonna be constructed to process gravel base for the roadway now, and eventually will be paved. Um, it's in an area that is earmarked all for pavement down the line, so there won't be any landscaping or anything like that that needs to come out. Um, we have provided a diagram in the plan set here illustrating that it does meet the requirements to have a uh, ladder truck turnaround in that location. Um, the other components of phase 1A 
are a stormwater management basin that you'll see located here and another one about midway through the access driveway and another stormwater management basin that you'll see here at the end of the access driveway. Uh, these stormwater basins have been designed with full build out of the site in mind and in our minds full build out in this site is approximately 100% paved condition. So those have been, for the purposes of phase one, those basins will actually be over designed because we're obviously not paving the entirety of the, the site now, but we are constructing those basins fully so that we won't have to go back in and reconstruct or disturb those basins at a later date when the site is fully um, constructed. Um, the other big component of um, phase 1A is this area that you see here kind of toward the westerly side along the 25-foot wetland buffer zone. That is a compensatory storage area. Um, it was identified to us by the CONCOM agent during the tech review process that that is in fact a part of the order of conditions and it was her preference that that get added and constructed right up front in phase 1A of the site. So we agreed to do that and added that to the plans. Um, phase 1B is this area that you see in between these two stormwater basins and sandwiched in between the proposed roadway and the compensatory storage area here in this lighter colored hatch. And what that is, is it's, a, it's an area that's earmarked for a building and for a paved, uh, paved parking facility. Um, again, the details of exactly what that building will be are a little bit up in the air at this point, but the reason it was included in phase one was actually at the direction of your city engineer. He asked that we include it just to prove and, and ensure that we're not designing ourselves into a hole, so to speak, that we are taking account for the entirety of what's gonna tie into this area as we move through this process, which we are. Um, so we have shown that there, and certainly if there were to be any revisions uh, to phase 1B for any reason down the line, we would have to come back to this board for a site plan modification. But for now, this is what we're intending. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, some sewer will flow back toward Oak Hill Way, where it will get picked up in the existing system. Um, along the stream that's here, water is coming in from Oak Hill Way. Um, all service utilities are coming in from Oak Hill Way. Um, and really that's it. We have been through the tech review process. We did work uh, quite extensively with your city engineer and I believe that we've satisfied um, his comments. We've made a few improvements to the plans. Uh, one with regard to this hammerhead turnaround um, and illustrating that that will accommodate a, a fire apparatus um, as a result of our conversations with the city engineer and the rest of the items that we worked with him on were really just the practical nuts and bolts of how we're going to install things like the sewer and things like that. Um, so I think we're in pretty good shape on this with regard to tech review. Again, kind of very bland for the time being, just being, for lack of a better term, where it's really just being a driveway, some utilities, and an oversized stormwater management system at this point. Eric? Yes, Pam. To clarify, um, you're only asking them to approve phase 1A tonight. Phase 1A, yes. And, 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 and graphically, for clarification, Eric, phase 1A is the, is, the dark, is the dark shading and phase 1B is the light shading? That is correct, sir. Okay. And the other question I've got for you is, if you, if you know, it's, you may not know, but if you know, what is the timeline for the construction? Um, I, honestly, I don't know. Um, I believe Lou Tarantino is on the call and might be able to speak to that a little bit better than I can. Um, I believe we want to get started on this come springtime and at least get this roadway in here um, so we have stabilized access to the site. Okay. No, that's good enough. Yeah, I'm just curious. Uh, if, if you're done, Mr. Diaz, I'll, I'll, I'll pull the board in. Did yes, sir. Any? Okay. Uh, planning board members, uh, any, any comments on the part of the board? This was a site that was, I guess, Pam, am I, was this at one time part of the old power station? This, this was- This was the power plant site, yes. Yeah, and then this was, I remember, 
uh, and there was there was there was a number of wetlands filings that were done here, a number of environmental filings that were done on this site historically. Uh, okay, any any comment on the part of the board members? All right. Uh, this being a public hearing, uh, Pam and or Rob, do you do you recognize any members of the pub public that would like to be recognized? Mr. Chairman, could I ask a question? Certainly. Thank you. Um, Eric, how far back is your furthest back hydrant on the plan? I'm trying to look at it, but it's kind of small. Yeah, let me zoom in here. Uh, I can find a better sheet that will show us better. It's our grading and drainage sheet. I think we have a proposed utility sheet that will show hydrants a little bit better than this here. We are showing a proposed hydrant right in this location here. Our turnaround is at the end of the street here, is at the end of the proposed roadway here. So we're showing a hydrant approximately, I'd say 150 or so feet from there. If I go to my profile sheet, I can get us some better stationing. Um, I've got a hydrant at approximately station 500 and I've got this ending at approximate station 800 and uh, you're, you're, at nine. You're, you're at nine. Yeah, we're at 900. So about halfway down the proposed roadway is our closest hydrant at this point. Okay. Um, Larry usually likes to have a hydrant at the end of the line for okay. flushing purposes and stuff like that. If you could do that. And uh, who knew yeah. we'd put 20, we put a whole bunch of fire trucks out there and full lot of water out there too. So um, <laughs> the possibilities are endless. Yeah, in fact, you know, we've got our water main does extend all the way down to the end of the road. So I don't think it really hurts us to drop a hydrant there oh. out of the way somewhere. Okay. Hi, just want to, this is uh, Stephanie from Strong Point. I believe um, we are proposing a hydrant at the end of this road for phase two. Because right now, uh, where our water line ends and we stub it, <clears throat> there's going to be more pavement in another building, possibly in the future. Are you so saying, that, Stephanie? Are you saying, for clarity, are you saying that you plan that you plan to extend the paving beyond Station Nine Hundred? Not, not during this phase. Yeah, no, no. But I mean, in the future. Yes. Okay. Uh, I. I believe if we look at the full planning build out, um, pavement will actually extend to the side of the basin. Yeah, uh, pavement does in future phases extend a little bit more, but I think what we can do as a part of phase one um, is, you know, any hydrant that we were anticipating putting in phase two at the end of this pavement, I think we can cut that in now as a part of phase one and get that on these plans. Okay. And actually, if you go much further, you're in the town of West Bridgewater, and they have a totally different hydrant uh, than we do um, for access. So we use a totally different uh, threads and uh, connections. So sure. they probably want their own hydrant. Not a problem. We can certainly add that. And if we could do that as a uh, condition of approval, we would certainly appreciate that. Now, Eric, the, the side of the roads, are they going to be granite curb or? Uh, no, I believe the only thing that we, and Stephanie, correct me if I'm wrong, we're proposing a bituminous curb here. Is that right? That is correct. Yep, bituminous curbing. Um, yep. I believe ex uh, along maybe, hold on, let me just take one. We might have a little bit of uh, curbing along the crossing. Yeah, along where we have the wetland crossing here, I think we have a, a concrete curbing, uh, something just a little bit more substantial. Uh, but where we're coming outside of that crossing in the wetland buffer zone areas, we're only proposing a bituminous curve through here. What was the, uh, Eric, what is, what is the width of the proposed paving? Width of the proposed paving is 24 foot pavement width. From gutter to gutter? From gutter to gutter, that's correct. And what is the diameter of your temporary turnaround? Um, I can zoom in on that. I mean, because I know you're not under subdivision rules and regulations, but to meet to meet the 
turn around for the emergency equipment. I think it's 120 feet. And that's what we held. We we gave a radius of uh, of 60 foot, so we have a diameter of 120. Okay. Uh, just to make sure, even though we're not on the subdivision control, we figured that was the standard. Yeah. Um, eventually, this is going to be a bit of a sea of pavement anyway, so we had yeah. the room to do it. I like it. Yeah, very good. No, there it is right here. I'm sorry, I didn't even see it. Radius of 60. I didn't see it. Thank you. So, Eric, will there be a driveway opening, if you will, um, that will lead to the back portion where we have the piles of um, uh, mulch or recycling? Along this side here, you mean? Yes. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is along this side here, uh, probably no curbing for the time being along this side. Everything is sheeting um, toward the detention basins anyway, so we don't need it for stormwater management. And if we put a curb along that side, the only thing that's going to happen is just going to get beat up and run over by trucks for now. I think um, curbing will go in along that side when a phase two comes through, when we do have some more defined, let's say, traffic islands and things like that. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Very good. Uh, any other comments uh, on the part of the board? All right. Well, this being a public hearing, uh, are you recognizing anyone else, either either Pam and or Rob, from the public that wishes to speak? I believe the ward council wanted to speak. Good evening. Is is ward council? Would, it, would this be the council in the Castro? Oh, it really would. Oh, good evening, council in the Castro. Good evening. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you. Um, Susan DeCastro, Ward 4 Counselor. I live at 90 Samuel Avenue, very snowy tonight. Um, I am very interested in what's happening here. I was very pleased when um, Mr. Levy and Mr. Tarantino purchased the property. Um, I've had a, a rough time with, with activities at this property over the summer, starting in April and continuing till as recently as the Sunday after Thanksgiving because they've been um, experimenting in composting. And we've all learned the hard way just how smelly composting is for the, the abutting Ward 4 neighborhoods. Um, so the engineer characterized it as just vacant and nothing going on there. But in fact, there has been quite a bit going on there. And it has caused a lot of, um, a, a lot of, um, Concerns. Problems, a lot of problems and strife for Ward 4 residents. Um, I want to get that onto the record. Um, and also, I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask what is going to happen with the composting? And uh, when will that go away and the odor that goes with it on warmer days? Mr. Diaz, do you, do you know the approximate location of that activity on the site? Um, I believe that the composting in this area is back in this portion of the site, actually in the West Bridgewater portion, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, so it is quite a way removed from what we're proposing for phase 1A. Um, it, it'd be 100% honest, and I apologize for not calling out the, the composting in my presentation. I should have done that because uh, Ms. Nicastro is right. It is an active use of the site. Um, and that was, and that, was conduct, that activity was conducted by a, the prior owner? Uh, that act that activity, my understanding, is being conducted by the current owner. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I, I don't know what the future of the composting is. I simply know that it's not anticipated to be affected by what we're proposing for Phase 1A at this time. So okay. I, I believe the composting will remain um, for the foreseeable future as an independent issue um, I know, or as an independent matter or use, I should say, elsewhere on the site, um, I know that the owners have, have certainly fielded some concerns about the composting, and my understanding is that they've responded um, pretty well um, and continue to do so. That, that, I, that area that you've, that you've identified, that's actually in West Bridgewater. That's actually in West Bridgewater, correct, but I believe it butts right up against the Ward 4 area over here. Yes, it does, yeah. Yes, it does. Um, well, the, unfortunately, the, the abutting neighbors across from the, the train tracks have real heightened interest it's what, in what's going on on this property as the result of, of the uh, odiferous issues this summer. And so 
I, I would expect that we will get quite a turnout when phase two begins and you come in for approvals and I have to host a neighborhood meeting. So um, keep, keep that in mind. Um, and, you know, I, I just thought it's important for me to voice the displeasure of my residents um, and their heightened interest in the property as a result. Thank you. Understood. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Were, were there any other members of the public that wish to be wish to be heard? There is nobody in the waiting room. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, I think that in, in the, and again, Pam, there's no other there were no other concerns on the part of the check review that, that needed addressing. Everything was. Everything was taken no. Care of. This he he is correct. He had multiple meetings with the city engineer to go over this, and this is the outcome of those meetings. And check review. Yes. Okay. Well, without further ado, if there's no other issues or no other comments, uh, would uh, could you bring? The, yes, thank you. Uh, could you would would a board member care to make a motion? I'd make a motion to approve on the condition that the hydrants are added as, as uh, Chief Williams suggested. And You're stated. approving 1A? Yes. Only. Phase 1A. I'll second that motion. So we, we do have a, a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote at this time. Larry Hassan? Yes. Uh, let's see. Tony, we, were you on for the whole presentation? Yes. You were. Okay. So how do you vote on this? Yes. Thank you. Reggie Thomas? Yes. Craig Pina? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So voted. Great. Well, thank you all for your time. We certainly appreciate it. All right. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay. So were there any other items or housekeeping items or anything else, Pam, that you and our there Rob? There is not. Wonderful. Then I guess I would be in good form to ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. A second. second. Have a good evening.